Hello Oracle Database World, this is Justin and in this Oracle Database video YouTube tutorial I am going to show you how transactions are, are um, invisible to other database sessions until they end, until they're committed. Okay, um, this, is not a, this video is not a full treatment of transactions, please see my other Oracle Database transaction related videos. Uh, but this video just shows you um, how transaction isolation works. Okay, and transaction isolation is a big part of, a, of a, what makes an RDBMS, Relational Database Management System, an RDBMS. Okay, uh, a transaction can be described in the database, can be described as um, an operation which changes data, i.e. if you were to um, modify a bunch of rows in a table, that would be considered a transaction. Okay, and a transaction is done at a session level and is not seen by other sessions until the transaction is committed. Okay, so a database will always make the change in memory and allow you time and allow you a chance to back out that change. Okay, so when you update a row in a table, the, dat the database is automatically, before it makes the update, it's going to take what that row currently looks like and put that in what's called undo data. Okay, and that undo in an undo segment. And that undo segment is going to be used to reconstruct that row in case in the event that you want that you want to roll the transaction back. Okay. What it's also going what it's then going to do is it's then going to make a redo copy of the data that, of what you're changing the value to. This protects the data in a recovery scenario. So it writes the old. So you so you do an update on a row in a table. Okay, and Oracle will automatically change the current, put the current value in an undo segment, and it will write out the value that you're, that you're, um, that the target value that you're going to change it to, into the redo segment to protect it. Okay, and then it's going to make the change in, um, in memory in the SGA in its data blocks. Now at that point, and and the redo is going to go into the redo log buffer. Now at that point, you have two options. If you typed in roll back. What will happen is the data in the undo segment will be recalled and rewritten to the uh, to the table, okay, to to to, to, to make that data where it, what it used to be. If you type in commit, what happens is the data in the redo log um, buffer gets written to the um, online redo log files on disk, okay, and the um, data in the undo segment is marked as um, is marked as expired. Okay, so that being the case, I'll show you what I mean by transaction isolation, how this works. We do a set Oracle SID finance. We ensure that our Oracle SID is set to finance. And we're going to log in as uh, SysDBA. This works the same with regular users, but we'll show you with SysDBA. So show user, user is Sys. We're connected to the finance database as user Sys. Okay, finance sys. So now there is a table that the sys schema owns called names. And if we select all the rows from the table, select asterisk on names, we will see that the table names has one column, F name, and two rows, two values, Minka and Justin. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and I am going to insert into names values rich. I'm going to do select asterisk from names. Now, notice how there's three values here. Okay, Minka, Justin, then I inserted a third one, uh, Rich. So now there's three rows when we ran our select statement again. Minka, Justin, and Rich. Now, notice how I did not uh, type in commit or roll a rollback. Okay, um, since I didn't type in commit or rollback, that, 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 that means that this transaction is currently in progress. Okay, and transactions which are currently in progress are invisible to other database sessions, and I'll show you that. So I open up another DOS window here, set my Oracle SID to finance, and I am going to sure I'm set properly. And I'm going to create another session um, to my finance database show user 
they finance this. So I have two sessions right now, connect SQL Plus sessions connected to my Oracle database. Now, describe names. I should see the names table. Now I'm going to select asterisk from names. Ooh, look at this. Even though I'm logged into the same user, check out the difference. When I do a select asterisk from names in this session over here, I see three rows. When I do when I see it in this session over here, when I do a select asterisk from names, I only see two rows. I don't see rich, the third row that I just inserted. Why is that? That's because of transaction isolation. Okay, transaction is not published, if you will. For, to the rest of the database, even if you log into the same user, until that transaction completes. And the transaction transaction doesn't complete until one of two things happens. It's either committed or it's rolled back. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to type in commit, which ends the transaction in our first session. Commit complete. Now in our, in our uh, other session, now we're going to go ahead and type in select asterisk from names. Now we see all three rows. We didn't up here, but we do now because this session committed it. Okay? So that's what transaction isolation is. Okay? And it's very imperative in, um, in what makes an, uh, a database a database. So if, you're ever, if, you, if you ever encounter a situation where in one screen it shows one result and the other screen it shows another, this is why.